So, um, okay, we got the hard task to be the first one to speak, and so we failed. <laughs> Uh, my name is Jean Linéi, I'm the CEO and co-founder of OnTech, and today with Luis, uh, we will uh, discuss what we've done so far and what we are trying to achieve. So, um, we wanted to have like a, a bit of a general introduction of what, how we see the energy uh, and how it could become more and more open source over the years. The idea is that we see it as a pyramid. Uh, with the basis being the power hardware and then having like levels of sensors, real-time algorithms, industrial informatics, um, higher level in terms of uh, communication, how we dispatch information from these devices on the field, uh, what protocol we'll use, uh, how we dispatch the energy among different uh, power hardwares. And then there is the uh, highest level, which is like simulation, uh, optimization, uh, and modeling, forecasting, and so on. Uh, today it's really exciting because if we uh, look at what are the talks about in this session, we have like plenty of amazing projects that are filling these pyramids. And uh, it's really interesting because uh, eventually we, c we can reach that point where we uh, have like the whole chains from the power hardware to the modeling, to the forecasting, to the optimization, uh, through all the complexity as well of communication and protocols and so on. Uh, an interesting thing to note is that like the, the time constraints in the power hardware is not necessarily the same as the one for modeling and simulation for grid, for instance. So uh, the complexity associated with these things um, makes the informatics uh, different. It's different fields between like the embedded world to uh, the HPC and modelization and optimization world. So there is like an inherent complexity in the energy domain that is really interesting uh, as a technical uh, asset and thing to, to explore. And this is why I'm really excited today is that like in this session we are uh, combining simulation, communication, hardware, and, and so it seems that we have already all the bricks, and maybe tomorrow we'll build the pyramids. Um, so we, the energy people, uh, have the power to change the world, and so I'm, I'm really excited about that. Uh, I will let the floor of speech to Luis now. Both, uh, Thank you, Jean. And this pyramid is built with different bricks, and these different bricks are hardware, software, like Jean just said. And uh, hardware usually is hard until it isn't anymore, until somebody comes along and bundles the hardware somewhere and makes it uh, ergonomic, ma makes it easy to use. That's what uh, Arduino has done. Uh, that's what Raspberry Pi has done. Uh, Microbit has done it as well. And they have inspired us to do that for power hardware. And, and that's what we have achieved. We have, I have, there's a box there with one of our um, circuits and I'll, I'll pass it around uh, a little bit later. Um, we propose a community-based, uh, compact, versatile, open source and low cost uh, technology for learning and prototyping power electronics. That's, that's the goal, that's what we, we want to achieve. Uh, the idea here is to create a technological sandbox, just like a Raspberry Pi, just like Arduino, have something that is standardized, that is simple to use, that can be used by academia for teaching, can be used by industry for fast prototyping or for using in, uh, in other applications for makers and fab labs to make fun stuff and burn it. <laughs> and this is the place where we hope to foster new ideas and, and come up with new talents, people who are willing to you know, build electric bi bicycle, or people who want to build a microgrid, who want to understand how it works and uh, put together the bricks and build the hardware upon which they can uh, test their, um, their forecasting algorithms or testing their models. Now how does, starting to get a little bit under the hood, uh, how does power hardware work uh, if we look at it from the perspective of um, like a functional analysis? The power is really the, the, the red arrow in the corner. And to get that arrow to work as we want, we have all these different arrows in the middle. And if we 
take a top-down approach where we come, we did a forecasting, or I did a simulation for, uh, which allowed us to do a forecasting, which allowed us to, do, to calculate an energy management strategy, which we then send via dispatch through a protocol all the way to the target, and when it gets to the target, it gets here, through the communication uh, back door or front door. And that goes into the industrial informatics and the, the control systems, which are operating in real time, locked into this um, micro or nanosecond level loop. It also receives measurements from its own embedded sensors, but these are not normal sensors that we come and interrogate via LoRa once a week, or these are sensors which are sending information at a one megahertz bandwidth, which you are sampling at uh, 50 microseconds or, or sampling at a very, very precise moment as well. These combined the control with the algorithms that are in here, they create the low level electric signals, which then go there and trigger the power electronics for them to work the way you want them to. And then the, the loop is closed and the thing works. There's a little feeder circuit in the middle, never forget it. The energy has to come from somewhere. So and sometimes if that little feeder secret fails, the whole thing stops. Right? So everything kind of stands on the choice of the little, the little component that you made when you put that little feeder secret there somewhere. And what we did is that we got all the stuff, we put it into a board, and you have all the different blocks which are somewhere bundled there together. But you don't have to understand to that level of complexity unless you want to. You see the communication coming in and the power going out. That's it. And that's the idea. Uh, we have two products. Uh, we have one which is a power product, the twist board, which uses the second product that uh, I'll, I'll pass it to Jean to talk about. The twist board is a module which we can then rack, either rack up together, so we pick several twists, we put them together, and that allows us to handle more power. Since they synchronize and communicate with each other, it's uh, a linear progression. We, uh, the more spins we put, the more twists we put together, the more power we can handle. And we created a communication bus at the low level, which her, can talk in CAN, can talk in RS-485, so we can talk at the millisecond, we can talk at the microsecond, and we can talk at the nanosecond with analog. So we have different bandwidths which we can dispatch with through different communication methods and protocols. And we have this pin board. Which I'll let Jean present you. So e eventually, in order to control power hardware so fast, you need like some special uh, embedded microcontroller, and this uh, microcontroller has like some real-time constraints to it. So it's not a regular Arduino or Raspberry Pi that will do the job. If you want to have like good performances, you need like really precise timers, really special communication um, uh, peripherals, uh, and so eventually we we came up with uh, designing our own board, which is like the spin board. The spin board is um, both a piece of hardware that looks a bit like an Arduino Nano or a Raspberry Pi Pico. And this thing has like tremendous resolution for its PWM signals, so the driving signals that will eventually drive the power stage, but also a really flexible um, uh, acquisition of signals, so how it will connect with the analog signals on, on the board. Uh, eventually, um, microcontrollers are great only if they work together with great ergonomics, and, and coding uh, a microcontroller can become either a nightmare, either a piece of cake, depending on, on what is the software and the ID that you use to do so. Um, so we wanted to comply with uh, a with the maker movement mindset where you basically take a piece of, of uh, microcontroller, you plug it with USB to your computer and you start coding uh, in, in, in seconds and minutes. You don't have to install all the tool chain and so on and everything is done uh, by the ID itself. So without the complexity to, pr to, to set uh, and, and so on. In order to do so, so we use uh, platform IO uh, together with a Visual Studio Code that so it's a really uh, seamless experience for, for the developer. But also we have higher level of, of uh, development that is possible through MATLAB for uh, simulation people that want to deploy some uh, control loops and uh, con control loads directly in the, in, the, in the target. 
they can do so through a higher level of, of um, graphical coding, let's say. Um, so, um, in those hood, there is uh, something from the Linux Foundation, Zephyr Artos, that is providing like uh, a framework on, on top of which we've built APIs. So these APIs are calls that are mm, basically making things uh, seamless for the user so that you don't have to go through the hassle of the 2,000 pages of the microcontroller in order to program the power hardware. You have like high-level functions that relates to uh, the power world, so okay, what what is the duty cycle? Uh, what signals I want on on that MOSFET, or directly related to the application? I want to increase the voltage. I want to uh, decrease the voltage, so I can I can um, go in my level of complexity in the language I talk daily, and I don't have to go through documentation and things like that. Um, so we have different APIs. One is the microcontroller API. If you want to develop your own hardware, your own power hardware, and control it through uh, the spin board, you can do so. Or you can directly call another API that is built for the power hardware that we, that we, we provide as well with, with, the, with the spin module. So this way you can call functions and not uh, signals. And then there is a communication API, how to synchronize things with the surrounding world, and task APIs to say, okay, I want to dedicate that amount of time to do this calculation and that amount of time to do uh, like communication or higher level uh, housekeeping stuff. And then there is a user code that is basically your main, uh, as in a Arduino experience, let's say. So this is uh, the pinout. <laughs> Of course, everything is open source, so the hardware itself is uh, CERN OHL license based. Um, the idea here is to push people to share back the modification so that we can uh, move, move on with a better and better hardware over time. Of course, all the documentation is Creative Commons, uh, all the interface is uh, like, and the, the graphical stuff is GPL. Um, and we have like a dataware and, and, and something that you can plug and see like the data live, like if you were having a kind of a low bandwidth oscilloscope just by plugging your USB cable and gathering your data from the device directly. Uh, in order to make that thing happen, uh, like we've created a foundation, a uh, foundation that is under the aegis of the Sinners Foundation, so it's a National Council of Research in France that has uh, put a ton of effort into making this thing a reality. Uh, so we got a lot of support from, from a public lab in France, and this is where it comes from. Um, and so the foundation is holding the IP. So uh, if you want to contribute to this project, everything will be uh, under a dedicated foundation that have strict rules to enforce the open source vibes of the project uh, forever for everyone. And then there is a startup that is basically providing the hardware because if you want to uh, develop things, you need someone to be able to provide the hardware to, to, to go fast, basically. And, and yeah, so on the foundation side, we create tutorials, content, MOOCs, uh, and we make that thing available online. So we create an online space for that. We also coordinate uh, a a small uh, embryo of community at the moment, but we hope it to make it more vivid and to foster an international collaboration around these fields of power hardware for energy. And also we are uh, starting to organize training sessions and events to answer, un answer uh, local needs. Uh, and the idea is to spread and to make things uh, decentralized in a way that everyone can tackle its needs of energy with this kind of Arduino for energy thing. So for, to give an example of the first use case, uh, at the moment we are working on a use case with a, a, a fully open source e-bike. And in, the, in this e-bike you have like inverters, you have like battery chargers, BMS, uh, BMS system in order to, to monitor all the cells of the battery, uh, converter as well for the PV panel on, on the roof. And so we are collaborating with other great open source hardware projects such as uh, Libre Solar. And, and we are aiming at replace all these closed source piece of converters inside of this e-bike 
uh, and make it fully open source A to Z uh, from the smallest piece of electronics to the frame uh, to, to the bike itself. So yeah, that, that's it for me, and uh, hopefully Luis will be able to make a demo in five minutes. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can combine with a question in between. And how much? Sorry, can we, can we buy the boards, and how much? We've started producing, so we have our own pick and place machine. So everything is made in France at the moment, assembled in France, sorry. Um, so we've started assembly. Uh, we've shipped our first eight boards to a university in France uh, for uh, students. Uh, they haven't destroyed the boards yet, so it's a good sign. <laughs> and uh, so we, we have pre orders at the moment, uh, and so. To give an insight of the price, at the moment the power module is 300 euros and the microcontroller is 35, 39 uh, euros. Uh, if, uh, yeah. can, can it be used in a full tolerant architecture? So, yeah, to answer that really fast, maybe I will come up back to that slide. So one of the strengths of the modular approach is that uh, we've put a lot of effort into making um, different modules being able to share power loads and share communication. And it's a good uh, thing for fault tolerance because you, if you go modular, if a module fail, you can uh, think of clever ways of replacing the faulty modules with uh, another module. An application is a complete autonomous for energy, autonomous for electricity, home with uh, wind, wind power a little, uh, solar panels, uh, photovoltaic, uh, also bicycle with uh, electric assistance uh, and so on. So also for, for with low tension DC for computers and something else and high tensions AC. So uh, and uh, and also taking account the the day of the of, uh, the hour of the day the battery charging with lead battery sizing uh, with li lithium or lithium, I don't know, something like that. So definitely off-grid uh, applications are, are key and, and also for energy independence and so on. At the moment, the module that we've developed is DC-based, so it's DC to DC. It has a really wide range of operation between 90 volts down to 10 volts or so. So it complies with all uh, battery technologies from 12 volt batteries, 24 volt batteries, 48 and uh, 90, like 86 volt batteries. So it covers a range of battery application, let's say. In the future, our goal uh, for this kind of, of, of grid applications uh, and, and home and, and energy independence is to go for uh, a microinverter, basically. And, and this will be made by combining different modules. So this one is a DC module, and then we'll add an uh, AC connection on top uh, in order to cover these this, uh, off-grid applications and, and energy independence. There is one in the back, and yeah, maybe here yeah, first. Uh, uh, could you, you create also some PMS for open source, or? So we haven't developed a BMS, but that is already covered by the hardware from LibreSolar, I think. Hello, uh, it's a bit of an implementation question. Uh, so you are using Canvas for now. Um, maybe it's because the, the automotive world is using it. Um, I was wondering if you were uh, thinking about moving to something like T1S. I'm not sure you're familiar with that. It's kind of uh, Ethernet, but with the CAN uh, topology, so uh, multi-drop. Um, so it's really nice and uh, kind of microcontroller friendly and IP based uh, by thanks to Ethernet. So I was wondering if you were kind of thinking about it. So uh, yeah, we thought about it because Ethernet is has great features, but it it tends to be costly. The idea is to go like to to lower a bit down the cost of the overall communication architecture and so on. Um, 
yet uh, we, we are making things like to the biggest extent modular in a way that if you want to plug uh, a different way of communication, you can do so. Uh, you can access all the pin of the microcontrollers that we have. Maybe in the future, we will make it thing, uh, we will support different microcontrollers as well that will have more features and more peripherals, but at the moment, it's not planned. We have like two different things. CAN is for housekeeping and sending uh, um, average data. And RS-485 is for super fast communication. So we go at 20 megabits uh, with RS-485. So it's, not, it's a bit uncommon, but it permits to have like uh, one cycle of control communication with different modules. So they can share uh, one reference and a set point, but also measurements among multiple uh, modules still at uh, 10 kilohertz uh, control frequency, for instance. No? Well, sorry, no demo. <laughs> Demo effect. Uh, <laughs> demo effect. But you know I could, I would like to just share something with you, though. Uh, the microphone so they can hear you online. But I'd like to share something with you. Can we, can we get into a, yeah. yes. Um, so we do have a, um, We do have a GitHub, and what I, was, what I wanted to show you is that on our own tech foundation GitHub, there are sample codes, the examples repository. And in the example repository, we have uh, multiple different examples of how do we use uh, the twist board at different applications, DC to DC, um, microgrid, AC. What I wanted to show you, the demo that I failed miserably to achieve, was the microgrid. So what is that supposed to look like if we get the peer-to-peer -peer AC microgrid? Uh, we have the documentation, how to connect the boards together, and the communication that goes here. And these two boards then will work together a certain to, to share power. In this case, it's a peer-to-peer -peer, um, exchange. So one board is drawing power while the other is supplying. And this is actually data from the board itself. That means that we can ask the, micro, the, the power converter to sample very quickly data and keep in its memory, and then we can retrieve it later. So we can do this kind of test where we get um, a, every point is about five microseconds apart, so we can get a lot of resolution and see what's going on. It's offline because we do it after the, 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 the work, but it, it still works like that. And for the DC-DC side, same thing. We had a DC, um, comes up, okay. We have uh, the different structures and the different examples, they're there. So we invite you to go there, take a look at our GitHub, get, take a look, the spin board is there, is in KiCad, the, the twist board as well. And um, if you want to talk with us during the day, I have everything that I would need normally for a demo, and we can just sit down and do it together. <laughs>